Hi, welcome back to another Creative Tap tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to color correct images together um, using individual color channels as a reference. So it's kind of like the best way to do it, really. Um, now, I've got this matte paint in here, okay? Um, what we've got is just this sort of back plate, which I got, and I'll send you the link to where I downloaded this from. I have made some adjustments because before, let me just get, let me just get a, um, brush before it was the photo was only about like sort of like that big just like that but what I did is I just extended this not very well just very quickly just so I got something to work with with you okay so um, I downloaded this image and then I downloaded this image as well and extracted it from a background I think no I haven't got it open there I just extracted this from a background okay what I've actually done is I've already color corrected them together because this was the original image now you can tell let's just scale that up you can tell that that doesn't fit okay um, and it still doesn't fit even after I color correct it because there's other stuff that I'd need to do um, in terms of oh just turn that on a bit early um, but yeah so this isn't it looks like a black and white image but if we zoom in you know on the plane by here we still got some color in there so I've got this hue and saturation on, on top so if I just chuck this up you can see actually there is still color in both the images it's just it is quite a gloomy picture a gloomy matte painting that I'm kind of starting to kind of put together anyway um, what I want to do is first of all I want to show you how to color correct by channel okay so just a quick run through I'm gonna deactivate these just a quick run through of channels just this little tab by here if you can't see it just go window and where are we channels yeah just make sure that's ticked there you go cool so just a little quick run through is when we go through these channels you'll get what what you get we view them individually um red green and blue that's what images are made up of um i'll show you a really strong example of this to really help you understand but whatever we see each channel when we view them individually so let's view the we're viewing the blue. What this is what this image is telling me, because it's black and it is black and white now. Wherever there's black pixels, so there's a lot on this image, and there's some in the shadows, but here, some on the ground. Wherever there's a if it's complete black, what that's saying is there's a complete absence of blue information. There's no so that it's saying there's absolutely no blue within here. There's no blue in here. Um, where it's you know very very white like in the sky it's saying that there's a lot of blue information in there so if we come to the green let's um let's zoom in actually on, on this because we know if we just click rgb we know this has got this ring by here has got quite a lot of red in it so if we look at the blue it's quite dark there's not a load of information in there look at the green it's quite dark if we look at the red if you see that it's a little bit brighter than the other channels saying there's more red data in there than there is green and there is blue okay so that's essentially what this view is telling us all right now this looks to me quite bluish so i wonder if i go through red green and blue yeah blue channel not by much but it seemed to be the lighter of the two saying there's a lot more blue information in there okay right i've got another image to just to illustrate this if i turn this image on we'll now look at our channels so we've got red green and blue so if we view just the red channel we'll see a white circle that says there's loads and loads of red information there but there's absolutely naff all around here if we look at the green channel we know we've got a green blob by here but just the green channel loads of green information there absolutely naff all by here and the same with the blue okay that's just a little kind of illustration just to show you what what it's saying loads of blue information here but there's nothing else nothing else okay so that's basically what these channels are doing so i'm going to delete my little um my little help over there and i'm also going to disconnect my hue and saturation and levels because this is what i did earlier so if i just put these in a folder for now um okay put that folder at the bottom right so what we want to do is we want to color match this sort of ruins ruins to this background now a lot of people would say yeah it's just it's quite grayscale though so just desaturate it not the way forward i'll be showing you another example in here as well where we match these greens to these greens okay so two examples for you today lucky very very lucky um, right first of all what i'm going to do is i'm going to start off by creating come down here and i'm going to create uh, levels okay and that'll appear above now if i just start don't do this yet but if i were to just start playing around and pulling up some of these values it's now affecting both images because i've got I turn it off I've got this in the background and then just this on top 
but it's affecting both of them. So the way to make it just affect the ruins, have it directly above, if you look at where my mouse is, when I hold Alt with my mouse between these two layers, it turns into a little arrow. Okay, so hold Alt on and off. When I'm holding Alt, if I just click, you'll see now there's a direct link, little arrow by there. So if I just pull and pull this, it's now just affecting this layer. So let's reset that. Now, what we want to do is we want to go through, so let's start with our red channel. Um, so turn green and blue off. And also in our drop down for our levels, we can go to the red. So what this is doing is when we pull this, it's only affecting the red channel. Okay. So if you have a look in, in there, you can see I've just pushed this all the way down. Have a look just by here. When I push this, it's only doing it to the red channel. So if I come back on, it's just affecting the reds, okay? So that's all we're going to be doing. Now let's just reset that. What the aim is, is this little ruins thing, I want this to match this gravel on the ground, this sort of grey, dark, ash-looking gravel. So it looks as if this gravel is this, made of the same as this brick is, made of the same material. So what I want to do, simply, I'm in the red channel of my levels, I'm viewing the red channel, I want to match the tones, or the brightness of the tones, in these bricks, to this ground because that's what I'm trying to match it to. So if I just start playing around with these dials now, maybe bringing this up a little bit, and so bring the whites down because they're a little bit too bright at the minute. I think I'll bring the mid tones up a little bit to get a similar colour, and also these shadows are a little bit too strong, so I'm just going to dull them back a little bit. Something for now along the lines of that. So it's a similar hue, it's a similar tone to um, what we've got going on there. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the green channel, and there's not a lot of change between there, actually. So um, green channel, and we're just going to change the green channel in the levels. See if we can make any adjustments just to get it a little bit darker like that. But also I'm going to bring this black level just to make it up a little, just to make it a little bit grayer something like that, and we'll actually do our black levels later, and I'll put that in another tutorial, that's quite important, and the same, just to see if we can drag, take out some of the contrast by dragging this down, and just bring the mid-tones, just so we get something that matches a similar tonal value to the floor. Finally, to our blue, so you can see we have to do quite a bit of alterations, make sure when you've gone to the blue channel that you do remember to do this drop down, because if you start playing around with things, you'll notice nothing changes. Okay, so blue drop down and let's bring this up and flatten this black point off bring our mid tones down just a touch and we're getting something that's looking pretty similar that'll get you matching these tonal values in each individual channel will get you most of the way so if we go back to RGB we've got something there still looking a bit too warm so you'll quite often I knew the red channel was a bit out you'll quite often come back and do another round as well so looking at where we are now, I'm just going to try and take a little bit more out of the red channel, just dumb it down a little bit, because it's still got a little bit, quite a bit bright compared to everything else. So I'm just going to take that down, but also dull these blacks a little bit, these black levels. Getting a little bit closer, because there is actually quite a bit of blue within this ground by here. It's more blue than, if we zoom in, it's more there's more blue in here than there is most other colors mixture of blues and reds to be honest and um, we've got a mixture of a few blues and reds in here so that's got us half of the way there so if we turn that on and off you can see that we're color matching quite a bit more the other thing i did do is i felt this is in terms of the channels if we go through they're matching the tonal values are matching pretty spot on um if we turn this off you can see that they weren't before, and now we turn this on, they are. Um, so another thing that I wanted to do now was saturation. So if I go hue and saturation, and just again, alt click between the two layers to link this directly, ah, wrong button, directly, so it's only affecting the ruins. And I'm just gonna dial down now the, I'm gonna come into the reds and just desaturate some of the reds, just to take a bunch of them out. Maybe come into the blues because there's still a bit of blue going on, too much blue going on down there. So we come into the blues and I'm going to desaturate the blues 
something like that. Okay. And if we go to the master and just saturate everything, we'll see what colors are left. So we, I, I do know that I want quite a few of the blues left. So I'm thinking if we turn this on and off, let's zoom in. If we turn this saturation on and off, you can see where we've come from. Um, I may take a few of the, uh, I may desaturate the yellows as well because there's some, some sort of yellows in here. Let's just take a little bit of that out, right? And now, if we zoom out, or oh, sorry, if we turn that on and off, you can see where we've come from. There is still color in there, okay? If we create a hue and saturation and we put it on top and saturate everything, you can see that there is actually still a lot of color in there. So don't worry, we haven't completely lost it. So if I zoom out, now if I turn these on and off, you can see that that is color matching the scene a hell of a lot better. Okay, so that's basically how you color match by channel. So I did that with the levels and then I did almost like a master with the hue and saturation. Now before we go, I'm going to show you another example. So we've done an example where it's quite grayscale. And I'm going to show you an example now where we've got these. Okay, so we've got we got some greens here and we got a green lawn. We want to match them. So we're going to be using the same process again, all right, guys. So I want to match these greens to, you can see there's a difference in the greens by here, by here, and by here. But I want to match these to the grass, just so they look as if they fit in there as much as possible. So if we come to our channels, let's have a look through. Let's go look at the red, let's go at the green. Red and the green now matching up pretty well. The blue, these have got a lot more blue information because they're brighter than the grass, okay? So first and foremost, let's make our levels and let's link that like so. Okay, so let's look at the reds first of all. Even though we know the reds are matching up more or less, I'm going to click the red drop down here and I'm just going to see if I can get them a little bit matching more. So the shadows here, I'm just going to I'm just going to dull them dull them back a little bit and also these bright points just dull them down just a touch and maybe our midpoint come like that and yeah okay let's come to the greens and come to the green drop down here I'm just going to dull those greens down a bit bring them up and then and that's like so just play with this midpoint this gamma something like that and the blues this is the most important one so come to the blue drop down you can see that these are way off so let's just bring them down and um, like so something like that and bring these down quite a bit and we should more or less kind of be halfway there they have got a little bit of light fringing on the top from when they were keyed from their background you'd probably mask that and do that a separate color color um, match but you can see if we come back in just from doing that these are matching a hell of a lot more probably look a little bit too overdone so I may even dial this down a bit just so we've got a little bit of difference in them so I've dialed that down to about 60% opacity so it's not completely as strong as it was before but it definitely looks a lot better than that they they have just been put on top now what you could actually do is a separate levels just for this top fringy bit on here. So this is an extra tip for you that I wasn't planning on doing, but I'm going to do it anyway. So I'm going to make another levels. Okay, and what we've got, let's link this with by holding Alt. What we've got here is a layer mask. So everywhere that it's white, this levels adjustment is going to affect, but it's linked to our image. So it's only going to affect on that image, but everywhere it's white it will. If I invert Control i this layer mask has now changed black. Um, it's now not affecting anywhere. So what I want to do is I want to get a white brush and I want to brush exactly where I want this to take place. Okay, so this, the top fringy bit by there, that's now the only area that's going to be affected so we can basically tune this to the best of our ability. So let's go back into channels, let's go to reds, and yeah we want those reds so sort of coming red we want them to be a little bit darker something like that oh i think we're going to nail it not going to lie we are going to nail it let's come into the greens and go greens bring that down perfect something like that and finally into the blues and the blues by here come down oh yes nice i like it 
something like that. If we go back to RGB, ah, the top now, if we turn this on and off, absolutely nailed it. So what we've come from is that, and we now end with that, so that they are in the scene now. And, you know, these greens are a lot darker. This green is a little bit more bluey. There's, there's some yellows in the screen. So, you know, it is a creative choice, but this certainly, as a starting point, sits in the scene a lot better than it originally did. So I really hope that did help you kind of build some understanding. Um, uh, so if it did, um, leave a comment of what else you'd want me to cover. Uh, happy to cover anything, really, as long as I, uh, as long as I know it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, cheers for tuning in, and I shall see you next time.